Lawrence claims to Nick that he didn't order a hit on June when pressed, which convinces Nick that he did. And June is the target of increasingly dangerous attempts on her life. Gilead typically attacks with the subtlety of a bright red pickup truck, slamming into a pedestrian in the middle of a quiet suburban street in broad daylight, so presumably this is their next strategy against June. With varied degrees of severity and in their own unique ways, Luke, Nick, and Janine finally break in response to this attempted murder by four-door, leaving all three of them in legal trouble. It would be tempting to hold June responsible for the deaths of her staunchest supporters, along with Nick, as she almost probably will, but not only would this be victim-blaming par excellence, but we would also be ignoring the bigger and more insidious concerns at hand. As the Martha who informs Janine of the news states, they never let anyone get away, the arm of Gilead is long and getting longer. June and Luke are currently trapped between growing antipathy toward American immigrants in Canada on the one side and Gilead's expanding influence on the other, putting them in escalating danger. Nick decided to become a double agent and start throwing hands at an incredibly late date because June's nearly fatal shooting demonstrated the limits of his power in Gilead. The news definitely fuels Janine's personal rage, but perhaps it also conveys a message of futility. What the hell is the point of striving to be a nice girl here in Gilead if Gilead can murder June in Toronto, where she's supposed to be safe? Janine is finished, in any case. Aunt Lydia decides that posting Janine with the new Mrs. Lawrence is the best alternative since she can no longer prevent her favorite girl from being posted again. To that end, she employs all of her most savage verbal and verbal manipulation tactics. As Commander Lawrence's first goal, Lydia informs the soon-to-be former Mrs. Putnam that placing Janine in her home will boost her reputation. She also includes some frightening undertones about women who understand their jobs and receive respect and grace in exchange. Mrs. Putnam grants Janine the handmaid role on a trial basis on the condition that there be no misunderstanding as to who Angela's real mother is on the day of her wedding to Lawrence. Aunt Lydia weeps with pride at Janine's submissive initial answer, but after learning about June, Janine entirely removes the handmaid mask. She tells Naomi, I detest you. How are you oblivious to that? Janine is later bound in shackles and tossed into the back of a van for this profoundly therapeutic experience. Our final shot of Janine shows her squeezing the hands of the equally shackled Martha, who is seated across from her, in a clear nod to Emily from season 1. The only thing I can hope for is that Lydia has now taken enough pills to free Janine from jail and that this callback does not portend what I think it does. Janine's backtalk, which Lawrence had ordered, may result in anything from genital mutilation to hanging. Nick's extreme emotional outbursts, on the other hand, are likewise out of proportion to their value and repercussions. Nick finally consents to work with Tuello against Gilead in exchange for being permitted to kiss June's forehead in the hospital. In order to punch Lawrence in the face, he also barges into the wedding. Nick Blaine, excellent work. I hope it was worth it because this little act of frail masculinity has raised the suspicion of Commander Mackenzie, making him potentially useless to Tuello. It has also enraged his wife to the point where she claims she no longer wants to be married, which is meaningless because it isn't like she would be able to get a divorce. Right now, Nick is the one person who makes me feel worse about myself. Now, the fact that Luke appears to beat the truck driver to death after witnessing June being struck by a pickup truck qualifies as a snap rather than just a legitimate attempt to stop a man from killing your wife. Although we only see their feet since June's perspective on the situation is so hazy, shouldn't it take more than 15 seconds to beat a man to death? I'm truly curious because I'm not at all an expert in this field. Whether it is realistic or not, after the driver passes away, Canada immediately issues a warrant for Luke's arrest, flags their refugee cards to prevent them from leaving, and sets up law enforcement patrols at the airport and train station to catch him. June needs to go immediately if the Justice Department level poor public opinion toward Americans is the reason the police are accusing Luke of murder rather than acting in self-defense. They are directed to the railway station by Tuello, who hastily arrived and has already organized an evacuation train for all the American refugees in Toronto. Unfortunately, the police are already one step ahead and are distributing posters with Luke's image on them as a wanted person. The good news is that Luke has spent the entire season dying for a martyrdom moment. She is ready to board the train when she realizes that Luke never intended to ride with June and Nicole at all and pushes them in front of him in line. You know who did board the refugee train, though? Well it was Serena Joy Waterford. 